When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go. Brown Town, living in Brown Town. You can always go to Jake Brown Town. It took Jake Browning five years in the NFL to touch the field in the regular season. He wasn't even drafted despite being a Heisman candidate at the University of Washington, and he was waived four times by the Vikings and the Bengals before finally earning the backup gig prior to the 2023 season. And then this happened. He got it! And this game is over. And Jake Browning has an NFL win, and man, did he earn it tonight. Jake Browning took his first opportunity and ran with it, lighting up the Jacksonville Jaguars on Monday Night Football and getting the first win of his career at 27 years old. But how did he get there? Why did he fly under the radar? And what's next for Jake Browning, a.k.a. Captain America, a.k.a. Mayor of Brown Town. Yeah. Today, I will tell you while going ball shallow into Jake Browning. It's a mini's balls deep. Ball shallow, that works. <laughs> Jake Browning, he hails from Folsom Prison. Stuck in Folsom Prison. Sorry, Folsom High School in Folsom, California, just a few miles east of Sacramento, which is where he became perhaps the greatest high school quarterback in state history, if not American history, if not the entire history of the world itself. Now, the Folsom Bulldogs were not a dink and dunk kind of team. They got vertical and Browning stretched the field long before he was throwing 76 yard touchdowns to Jamar Chase. In his three seasons as varsity QB, Browning threw 63 touchdowns as a sophomore, 75 as a junior, and 91 as a senior. In total, that's 229 touchdown passes which broke the previous national high school record set by former Missouri Tigers quarterback Matty Mock. He was named the Gatorade Football Player of the Year in both 2013 and 2014, then committed to Washington where he became the first true freshman to start at quarterback for the Huskies since 1997. That's right, the Bulldog grew up into a Husky. I'm pretty sure that's how dogs work. And if Bob Barker taught me anything about dogs, it's that they need to be spayed or neutered. But it wasn't until his sophomore season that Browning truly broke out and had the Huskies among the elites in college football. Remember wide receiver John Ross, the guy who ran a 4-2 40-yard dash in 2017? He's limping. 4-2-2. No way. So according to Four, what we two, just- two, and he limped. Well, that was Browning's top target on a lot of deep passes, along with future pros like Dante Pettis, Miles Gaskin, and Seahawks tight end, Will Disley. I got a really good line. I got Miles Gaskin, Savon behind me. So, you know, they, they definitely did a lot of the work. Solid NFL talent, but not exactly 2019 LSU if you were going to compare Browning to his current teammate, Joey Burrow. Now Browning, had a coming out party in October that season against the Oregon Ducks, going into Eugene and throwing six touchdowns, zero picks, and dropping 70 points against Washington's neighbors to the south. Just three weeks later, he'd have another six touchdown performance back in his native Northern California against the Golden Bears. The dude was balling, all right? Browning finished sixth overall in Heisman voting and accounted for 47 total touchdowns as the Huskies went 12-1, and one, securing a spot in the college football playoff where they'd meet Alabama. Despite still winning, Browning looked off. He had injured his throwing shoulder and had been keeping it a secret. But after a 24-7 loss to Bama on New Year's Eve in 2016, Browning got shoulder surgery and was never really the same at Washington following that surgery. After throwing 43 touchdowns in 20 16 Browning combined for just 35 over his final two seasons in Seattle. It was clear his shoulder injury had cost him some of his arm strength, which teams were starting to catch on to. And in the pre-draft process, an AFC West Coast scout said, John Ross really created that huge sophomore season for him. He's never had starting pro traits, in my opinion. Yes, it was John Ross who made him look good. Surely history would go on to prove that one anonymous scout right. Cincinnati Bengals select 
John Ross, oh, wide receiver, Washington. I do think it is interesting, though, the Bengals were the team that drafted John Ross, one of the biggest busts of the last five to ten years, and now since he is loaded at wide receiver, and Jake Browning just fed them all the rock. That said, it turned out pretty much every scout felt that way, because Browning went undrafted in 2019, passed up in favor of quarterbacks like Easton Stick, Jarrett Stidham, Trace McSorley, and of course, Gardner Minshew II, who played down the road at Washington State in Mike Leach's air raid offense. None of those quarterbacks had the accolades or the resumes that Browning had, but that's not the way the NFL looks at the draft. It's all about projecting towards the future and which guy just played the best. Which guy can I just say was really good most recently? That's, that's how it really works. He did have the Mannings attention, which should have been a sign that he might be good. And they, they asked him the hard hitting questions. If you were gonna make me a uh, fruitcake, how would you deliver it when you were coming over? Would you surprise me? But I get it. If you look at Browning, you don't necessarily see an NFL quarterback just on appearances. He's got a slight frame. He's not especially athletic for a pro football player. And his arm is okay at best. No one like that could ever play quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals, could they? Before Browning landed in Cincy prior to the 2021 season, he spent his first two years in the NFL with the Minnesota Vikings, sitting and learning behind Kirk Cousins, where he learned the art of shopping at Kohl's and of course being a backup QB, just simply waiting for your opportunity, ready to strike at a moment's notice. The Vikings eventually decided he wasn't going to develop into their long-term backup and cut him in the 2021 preseason. Maybe it was this pass that was the final nail in the coffin. As a Broncos fan, I do thank you, Jake, for making us all believe in Pat Sertan from the get-go in that 2021 preseason. Now, Browning had officially been replaced on the Vikings roster by third-round rookie QB Kellen Mond, and he was now up for grabs. The fact that he became a bangle was close to pure dumb luck. Since he was in the market for a practice squad quarterback, and they landed on Browning simply for the fact that he had been in Minnesota for the last two seasons and they were about to play the Vikings in week one. And it worked out pretty well for them. Uh, they went on to win that game in overtime and of course made it all the way to Super Bowl 56. I don't think I'm hyperbolizing by saying they wouldn't have gotten there without Jake Browning. And maybe, they would have won that game if Zach Taylor was smart enough to give him the start over Joe Burrow like all of us brown towners were calling for. Town. You stubborn son of a bitch! You cost your team a Super Bowl, Zach! Imagine if he did that and they won. Oh boy. Even though uh, Jake Browning was firmly behind Joe Burrow and even Brandon Allen on the depth chart in Cincy, the Bengals were impressed by his football IQ and kept on developing him. Rare for a quarterback in his mid-twenties, but he was doing enough things right for two teams to keep him around for that long. Jake Browning cemented his role back up to Joe Burrow with a six for six performance and making throws like this. Watch Yossi Vosh on the perimeter. He's gonna read the technique that the cornerback is using against Yossi Vosh. And he says, you know, he's gonna to try to stay over the top. So I'm gonna go back shoulder. I'm gonna back shoulder this. He never turns to find the football before Yossi Vosh does. Great throw, great catch. Of course, all of that patience appears to have paid off for the Bengals. Uh, Browning outdueled the great Trevor Simeon in the battle of the backups before the 2023 season, winning the job as Joe Burrow's understudy. And sure enough, his time would come. In 2023, which shall be known as the year of the backup. Thursday night football. Joe Burrow's wrist is not allowing him to grip the football. Something's very wrong. And you are all incredibly lucky Joe Burrow did not injure his wrist in a game against the Lions because the beaten golf wrist injury jokes would have been insufferable. But 
In steps Jake Browning, who at age 27 had thrown one pass in the NFL over five seasons, an incompletion in the Bengals' week one loss at Cleveland. A couple quarters later, Browning had thrown his first eight completions and his first NFL touchdown. A real under the radar type fill-in job uh, for Browning because the Ravens won easily, 34 to 20. Plus, we were all enamored with Joe Burrow's wrist and whether or not the Bengals would be in trouble for not disclosing the injury before the game. Until Burrow said this. This is a completely different different thing. Um, you know, it's not uncommon for guys to wear compression sleeves on plane because when you go up to that altitude, you, can, you know, things can swell up. I had, you know, football, you have a lot of bumps and bruises. This is a, a completely new injury. And then we learned his season was done and he would need wrist surgery. At which point, despite a decent performance from Browning, we all declared the Bengals season over. They were dead, Tigers. A waste of our time. Send them to the Tiger King to quietly be euthanized. Over the last few weeks, though, Jake Browning has gotten better at every turn. His completion percentage grew from 57 against the Ravens to 73 against the Steelers a week later. Despite the loss to Pittsburgh, Browning averaged 8.7 yards per attempt and looked like he was starting to figure something out. The Steelers' defense is a tough outing for a QB making his first NFL start. And then, in Jacksonville on Monday Night Football, Browning completed 32 of his 37 passes. That's 86.5%, the highest completion rate all time in a quarterback's first or second NFL start. Drew Brees has the highest ever in a game at 96.7%, by the way. Now, the rest of the season will either prove me right or make me look like a silly little fool but Browning's performance didn't look like a fluke or an anomaly in any way. If you watched that game, you were impressed. The Bengals made some adjustments before the week, like getting him out of uh, empty sets, moving him around more on keepers and bootlegs, and that seemed to play better to Browning's strengths in the passing game, which showed up against Jacksonville. But now, opposing defensive coordinators are going to know what Browning likes and what Browning does well, which is where the real test comes when you're judging a quarterback and how good he is in the NFL. Hey, if you're a Bengals fan and you're not subscribed to the Bengal Boys on YouTube, you're making a mistake. They drop Bengals and Bengals themed songs pretty much every week. They sent me this track early. Teach a martyr when a boy catching darts from Sir Jake. Having Chase and Tyler throw the ball, Zach Taylor's own mistake. Sure, it's no. Brown Town. But it's pretty good. It is hard to understate how well he played, though, in prime time on the road against a high caliber opponent. He looked like he understood the playbook, made decisions quickly, threw with timing and accuracy, and wasn't afraid to stand in the pocket and take a hit. And if they had just let him make all of the throws and hadn't given one to Tyler Boyd, they might not have needed to win the game in overtime. And had Browning simply done enough to just win the game, I wouldn't be talking about him today. Had he diced up the Raiders or Panthers, I would not be talking about him. But his performance for me was so far out of left field, I had to make sure he wasn't indeed wearing a fucking baseball uniform. Granted, he had one of the worst successful quarterback sneaks I've ever seen. There was a good pause right after the ball was snapped before he ever got moving. Maybe he was expecting a little push on the tush. I don't know. Wait, I do know. Brown Town is always open for a little push on the tush. It took until his fifth NFL season, but Jake Browning finally got his first NFL win on prime time, on the road, against a team, again, fighting for the number one seed in the AFC. And you just can't count out the Bengals in the AFC playoffs right now. They still have games against three current wildcard teams, the Colts, the Steelers, and the Browns. All of those teams, by the way, starting backup quarterbacks. And Browning looks like the best one, which is hard for me to admit with Gardner fucking Minshew in the mix. Oh, he's so sexy, that Gardner. <laughs> oh, shh, get it together. Not to mention, in week 15, Browning will get a chance to play against his old team, the Vikings. 
also backup quarterback. And let's assume that the Bengals do finish out the season strong. Whether or not they make the playoffs and Browning keeps playing at this level is to be seen. I've watched a lot of football and I feel like, at least for quarterbacks, you know, it's you're either the greatest ever or you suck. You know, it's just like this all the time. And there's a lot of peace and sanity right here, which is kind of where I like to stay. But there's enough teams that are looking for a viable QB every year. Browning has a chance to make himself a lot of money this offseason, either as a high caliber backup or maybe even someone who can get a chance to start full time in 2024. Who was Drew Brees' coach? Which coach likes efficiency and may need a, a quarterback? Is that Sean Payton? Am I predicting Jake Browning to the Broncos? Browning is not the future of the NFL. He's a guy who looks like he belongs in a game from 1997, to be perfectly honest, but maybe that's why I like him. He doesn't have much going for him in the talent department, and he makes it work anyway. Wait, am, am I Jake Browning? Am I Jake Browning? Thanks for watching That's Good Sports here on YouTube. Shallow balls deep on Jake Browning, who I will be rooting for the rest of the way. If you haven't, make sure you check out our deep dive into the Carolina Panthers and why they are screwed for the rest of eternity.